Hey guys, I'm going to run through some maintenance procedures in my Nissan X-Trail. A lot of these um, checks that I'm going to do are applicable for any vehicle. I'm not going to show you how to change your oil because I do have a separate video under my how-to playlist on how to do that. So in this video we're going to start by removing each of the coil packs and then um, we are going to be removing the spark plugs to either check the condition of it or replace it. To remove the spark plugs, we need a number 16 deep socket. The socket that I'm using is not a spark plug specific um, tool. So come the time the spark plugs completely loosened up inside the head, I couldn't remove it. So I've got an old trick of using a, um, a hose. And what I do is I um, shove the hose inside and push it against the tip of the spark plug and that way it um, uh, tightens itself around it and I can easily pull it out and to put the spark plug in I do the same thing put this plug in the spark plug into the hose put it down the hole and then just you know turn it a little bit until I can get a bit of thread going and then off I go with my socket okay the next thing we're going to do is check our air filter and to do that, there are four clips that you can easily undo with your hands around the air box. So undo the clips, lift up the air box, and slide out your air filter. Whether you check and clean it, or blow it with air, compressed air, or replace it. In my case, I only had to clean it. Next is cleaning your MAF sensor. In my case, I don't have the right tool to undo the two screws of, MAFs of my MAF sensor, so I just use the vice grip. But if you do so, just be careful not to strip the head of the screws. If you're careful, you can definitely do it with a vice grip. As a matter of fact, I've actually done this quite a few times. Once the MAF sensor is removed, be very careful and avoid touching the actual sensor. So we are going to clean the MAF sensor with a MAF sensor specific cleaner, which you can get from your local automotive shop. Next is the Nissan x famous cam sensor and crank sensor. Now these two sensors are known to fail as early as high 100,000 kilometers, so like 170, 180,000. Um, some of them they last longer than that. But these things, as they get older, you'll know because the um, fuel consumption of your vehicle is a bit high and eventually when they fail they're going to shoot out an engine an engine code or an engine light and um, uh, the most common symptom is the engine won't start it will just crank and it won't fire up so this is where the uh, cam sensor is located it's pretty easy to replace this unit The crank sensor, however, is very difficult and you won't, it's, you can hardly see it. I don't even have a footage of the thing because I can't get my camera close enough to get an actual uh, uh, footage of it. But it's kind of behind the block, it's kind of in line to the second cylinder and it's kind of way down uh, towards the engine block. And it looks similar to the cam sensor. If you have a look in there with the torch, I'm sure you'll find it and you'll figure it out. But to replace it, um, it's quite difficult because you can't see what you're doing. So it's going to be all feels. So you're going to have to feel it, feel your way around and just go blindly. Next, we'll be checking the condition of our CV boots. So we'll do the front first. And the best way to do it is jack up, jack, jack up one side of the vehicle, uh, get your wheel up 
and do a full steering lock left and right to stretch the CV boot and physically inspect for any cracks or tears on the actual boot. Then we're going to check a wheel bearing and this is the time you check it while one wheel is up in the air. You hold it on a 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock position, give it a, a, a quite of a jerk and see if there's any play on the actual wheel hub and then hold it onto the 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock position and do the same thing. Then give it a spin and see if the wheel bearing makes any noises. Um, you'll know it when you hear it, but if it's not smooth and you can hear a bit of whirling sound, that will be it. All right, let's move on to the engine and transmission supports. There are four altogether. Uh, this one is the one towards the front of the vehicle, uh, the bottom engine support basically. And as you can see, this one's uh, kind of collapsed itself. So we are going to be replacing this. While you're under here, it's the best time to check all your hoses as well, especially your bottom right radiator hose. And the best way to check it is to give it a squeeze and see if there's any cracks that will show up when you do put pressure or squeeze it in. And check your transmission lines if you got an automatic transmission. Uh, check those hoses as well. As you can see in my case, I do have a, a transmission leak uh, coming from uh, the hose down the bottom of uh, the radiator, which I have since fixed by tightening the uh, hose clamp, the hose clip. Okay, and also while we're under the vehicle, we are going to check our lower control arm bushings. And as you can see, mine is starting to uh, show signs of age. Uh, you got to remember that I haven't done anything to this vehicle since I bought it at 134,000 kilometers and it is now 216,000 kilometers. So there is a very big chance that these bushings are still original from the factory. Next, find your steering linkages both the left side and the right side and give it a firm shake or a wiggle and see if there's any play on them. Still at the front of the vehicle, we are now checking the um, inner CV boot. So these are the boots that are closest to the transmission side of the vehicle. Check both and left, uh, sorry, both uh, left and right, yep. And as you can see in my case, I do have a slight tear in uh, on one of the boots, which I have since replaced. Then we move on to the sway bar bushings. In this case, it's all good. Now we're moving on to the rear transmission mount. Uh, this one is not too bad, but I did end up replacing it. And it is very difficult to replace. It's uh, the most difficult among the four uh, engine mounts. So um, this one, um, word of advice, if you are doing this, the best way to do it is to remove the entire steering rack uh, to make to give you enough room to access all the bolts to actually remove and replace it. It is a bigger job and if you do remove the steering rack obviously you have to get a wheel alignment done as soon as you're finished. Okay next is the uh, prop shaft. So this is the end sticking out of the transmission. Give it a, um, a, sh a shake and make sure that the cross joint is okay and it doesn't have um, much of a play do this on the other end as well, basically on the rear differential end and do the same test. And here I'm just checking basically the other side of the uh, vehicle, all the boots, all the bushings, uh, steering boot, CV boot and all the bushings again, make sure they're all good. Okay, now let's uh, go ahead and check uh, brake lines. So the rubber brake hoses, just give it a bend, inspect closely for any cracks um, and if there are any signs of age or cracks then obviously replace them. Going back into the engine bay let's now inspect the front engine mount which is basically to your left as you're facing the vehicle. My one is in pretty bad shape so that ended up uh, being replaced as well. Next up are the O2 sensors. For the older Nissan X-Trails I believe uh, Series 1's uh, maybe some of the series two, so I'm not sure, um, has got one O2 sensor down the bottom. And I think they added a second O2 sensor for the later uh, models. Kind of similar to the crank and the cam sensor, 
um, if you do have issues with your O2 sensor, uh, the first thing is your fuel consumption uh, will get will be affected by it, and it will eventually shoot out an engine light with an engine code. Moving on to the rear of the vehicle, we are inspecting all the bushings again, from all the control arm bushings to your sway bar bushings. And do the same with the brake lines as well. Check the condition of your brake lines and the CV boots, both the inner and outer CV boots. We are checking all four shock absorbers. Um, the protective boot, rubber boot that you do have, mine is really bad actually, that needs to be replaced. So dirt will easily, dirt and mud will easily get into it and eventually uh, seep into the seals of the um, piston seals of your shock absorbers. To check whether your shock, shock absorbers are leaking, just stick your finger uh, into the base of the shaft and see if there's any oil coming out of it. Then we move on to inspecting um, the life of our brake pads and mine is pretty pretty low and pretty bad so I ended up replacing uh, pads and rotors. These are probably still original from the factory, I'm not 100% sure but I've never had to do these since I bought the vehicle several years ago. To check the life left in your uh, brake pads um, you've got to remove the wheel to see it clearly and uh, you can peek through a hole in the rotor or either um, look at it from from the side uh, if you look through where the rotors are you can see the thickness of the pads as you take out each and every wheel to inspect your brake pads take the opportunity to look at the inner side wall of your tire because the, this is the side of your tire that you don't normally see um, and have a look at any cracks or look at the condition of the side wall in. In my case I do have an old tire now and it's starting to show signs of age as well. As I put the wheels back in my car I just use a pipe to help me lift it up and um, makes it easier for me to align the holes um, onto the studs. So there you have it guys. This is obviously not a complete list of everything you need to check. This is just some of it. Otherwise this video will be too long, so I might create a part 2 of this and um, run through more things moving forward. If you do want to know any modifications I've done on my vehicle, I do have a mods playlist in my channel, so check that out. Thanks for watching guys, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next one.